Psalms 119, verse 17. Under this heading, Gamil. Uh, this is the third letter of the G Hebrew alphabet. We've done blessings to obey the word. We've done cleansing by the word. And now we do quickening by the word. To be made alive. Life comes by the word. Deal bountifully with thy servant. And that's liberal, large, great increase of thy servant. Now don't expect, if, you're, if you don't do what God tells you to do as a servant, don't expect bountifully blessings. A servant's got to serve. He, he's not a noun, he's a verb. He's a person of action. That I may live and keep thy word. You know, even though Paul says that we're absent from the body to be present with the Lord upon death, there's still that will to live to be a useful vessel and a servant of God. And the fact is that every day when you wake up or afternoon, if you work third shift or anything like that, when you wake up and you're not in glory and a rapture hasn't happened means that there are people out there who still need to hear the word and need to be saved. And there are Christians out there who need to be brought up in what needs to be done. There's still use for, me, for you. And keep the word. No sense of going 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 years old and you don't do anything what the word tells you. You don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you don't go in you know, all the world. And you'll be judged for all those years at loss. Open thou my eyes. So we're blinded. Without God's knowledge, without God's understanding, and God's wisdom, and God's mercy. There are times in our life that we need to seek God and say, God, open up my eyes where it is. I kind of pray that prayer for the ministry. What the Lord has for me where to set my eye, where to set my prayer, where am I going to make sure that Satan doesn't get me off or this flesh gets me off in a path that's not God. That I may behold the wondrous things out of the law, of thy law. Open my eyes when I read the law. That's the book of Moses, the first five books. To the Jew, let them open them up and see. Listen, when Jesus Christ came on this planet, their eyes were not open because they missed the prophecies, the 48 prophecies, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and God. They missed it because they were on their own selfish little goods. The priests and the scribes, they, you know, they were going to lose their position. Even though the priests and scribes would be set up even more under the throne of Jesus Christ, the people, they wanted, you know, uh, the Roman denomination, the Roman uh, dominion to be conquered and Jesus come in big the king. John chapter 6. Yeah, that would all happen. But they truly were blind. I believe Jesus even used a parable of the blind leaders leading the blind. At least they fall into the ditch. They could not see the law, the book of Moses. Even Jesus spoke another time. Moses spoke of me. That prophet that Moses spoke about was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the entire law. Fulfilling. 100% which man could not do. Matter of fact, when it came time to accuse him, they had to find liars. I am a stranger in the earth. And if you don't believe that, get into any airplane, fly anywhere, and then have them parachute you down some land somewhere, and land in the middle of that land and say, Hi, I'm such and such person. And see if they know you. How many people are on this planet right now living? And you are a stranger. You can walk through a cemetery and read all the names, and yet you're a stranger. Who
Who are you? What are you? It, when God takes knowledge of you, when God sees you, when God hears you, when God comes to you, when God does something in your life that he won't do to somebody who does not do what God tells him to do. In the eyes of God, you're not a stranger. Hide not thy commandments from me. And what the writer in verse 19 is saying, he's saying, listen, Lord, who am I, but let me know what you want from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it has unto thy judgment at all times. That eternal being in my life wants the God's judgment. And what the God's judgment is, I don't, you know, I, I want fire to come down and burn me. That's not what it is. It wants to know what God the judge honors, what is right and what is wrong, what is holy, what isn't holy. So that if you know what the judge is going to judge, you can do what is right in the eyes of the judge and not what is wrong and then become guilty. I know as far as right now, and it could change, the law in America, you're not to murder anybody. So if I, knowing that I'm not to kill anybody, I don't have to fear a judge. I can stand before a judge in, 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 a, in a case of murder, and unless there's liars or somebody trying to, to get me, I don't have to worry. I know pretty much of the laws, and there are many, many, many laws that I don't know Daytona Beach and in this country. That if a police car drove up right now and parked his vehicle and got out, I don't have to worry. Because as far as I know, with ignorance, that I have not violated no laws. I won't appear before the judge guilty. Yet, yeah, but as a born-again Christian, I ought to know at all times, guess what the Bible says? For all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. I am guilty. And I'm going to stand before that judge at the, at the, the, the uh, judgment seat of Christ. I will have things that burn up. I am not 100%. And I will face the judge as I lose things. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err, or err, however you want to say it, from thy commandment. Now that is a mouthful. Notice verse 21 does not put uh, a race or a group of people. It says, Thou hast rebu rebuked the proud. God has rebuked the proud. He has to give a sentence, a judgment, a scolding to the proud. Proud and pride are never an attribute of God. Pride will, will condemn you. And look what it says, that are cursed. Pride or proud people get a rebuke from God, and they are cursed. This is a condemnation that, you know, light has come unto men, and men refuse the light because their deeds are evil, and I'm misquoting the verse, but listen, pride will keep you from Jesus Christ and salvation. Pride of work, pride of church, pride of education, pride of whatever you got, and you're cursed. I'm proud to be a Baptist, and I'm going to stick to the Baptist principle, and that pride will get you cursed, even as a born-again Christian. I'm dead set on the music we listen to. I'm dead set in the Bible that we have. I am dead set, you know, whatever the things are that are not according to the Word, as we're studying in Psalms 119, the King James Bible. You know, there are plenty of people in the church today with pride because their their mothers and fathers, their great their grandparents, their great grandparents, their great great great, and they can go back to three hundred thousand million greats. 
rang the church bell or, or had to sat in this pew or built this church or whatever. Well, my great, great, great grandfather started this seminary and blah, 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 blah. And it ends up to be a curse. Because they have erred from the commandments or thy commandments, God's commandments. They have not done. They have not, they, they covet, they want more, they murdered. You know, remember, just thinking about murder. They, most of them committed adultery. Remove from me reproach and contempt. Contempt means to be despised, vile, or worthlessness. Have you removed everything that in your life is vile, worthless, and despised in the eyes of God? I don't care what you think about it. I don't care you like uh, a bunch of men driving around in the left hand turn on a Sunday afternoon. I don't care you like that. God, that's worthless. You're wasting time, you're wasting fuel, and you're wasting your money. I don't care, if, you know, for two, two teams to battle out over the pigskin on a Sunday afternoon. That doesn't bring no, God no honor. Oh, I'll hold a sign that says John 3.16. Like, anybody's going to go home and look it up in their Bible if they could even find John 3.16. Vile worthlessness or despise is your sin removed from your life. Those things in your life that you ought not to have. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming. What if he comes when you are in the act of that despise, vile, or worthless thing in your life? Today I talk about, you know, uh, I got a career and I'll pass, bypass the family and this and that. And I get that one year, that one yearly vacation, that week off, their vacation, and then we'll go have fun. And, man, what if you die before that? What if you die and woke up in hell? What's that one week vacation you get do good for you? That really helped your children with a good memory. That really helped your wife out when you got a spoiled marriage and your children don't know who you are because you've given yourself to your career or to your hobby or to something else or to somebody who you're not even supposed to be with. For I have kept thy testimonies. Have you kept the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? He was pure. He was sinless. They could not find no fault in him. And they tried. They tried to stone him one time, and Jesus spoke up and said, Well, what are you going to stone me for? For the good work? They said, Because thou art the Father. You said thou art God. He is. Had you gone back and checked the law and checked Moses, who you proclaimed, you know, Moses' seat, where did that come from? Find me in the Bible before that in Matthew where anywhere Moses had a seat. And had you searched the scriptures and done right, you would have been quickened by the word to realize Jesus is God. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a group of people out there that proclaim that Jesus is not God, you can't be saved. I don't care what you say. I don't care what prayer you say. I don't care where you stand. If Jesus is not God in your life, you are not alive by the word. John 1.1. 1, 1. Read the second epistle of John. Read what my conduct is to be somebody who says that. I am to slam the door in their face. And I ain't wish them. Have a good day. And I ain't wish them that. I'll even go as far as people who I don't know anything about their condition. They sneeze. I'll say, Gonzuta, I ain't going to wish you God bless you. Because you may be under Satan. You may be a carnal Christian I may be talking to. God going to bless you? Sometimes I slip the God bless you out there. But I try to say, if I don't know who you are, I'll say, Gonzuta. You got to remove what's despised, what's vile and worthless in your life to be made alive. Paul says, taking off those weights that hinder you from running. Take them off. If that job is preventing you from going to church, take it off. 
Well, my company, yeah, I know somebody right now is in my head, a name and all that, that his company, and then when it was sold out, everything that went with him was sold out too, and it was come to naught. Well, I know somebody who went in a company and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right. I also know that the heavens and earth are going to fold up one day and all that crap is just going to fly off in a burning, fervent heat, Peter said. And that which is done for Jesus Christ will last. Oh, yeah. You were, the, you were the manager. You were the president of your company. Yeah, 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 yeah. But how about your wife? Was she happy? What about your children? Were they happy? Or were they, to you, worthless? despise or vile in your life where God says in Ephesians 5 it's God Jesus Christ the husband the wife the children then the job go check Ephesians 5 and check it out you know what Paul says it is vain for you or vile if you give mission give money to a missionary and your wife needs a needs a night out for, for a restaurant It is vile for the wife to give money to something to church where she maybe she should buy her a husband a present or a gift that, that he, he desires or wants. Or maybe she feel given by the Lord. That would make him happy. God says that the husband is to please his wife and the wife is to please and acknowledge her husband. to give him reverence. You know what's vain and surprise and worthless today in America? That a woman has to give an account to another man that is not her husband. He said, when does my wife do that? When you put her in the workplace and she's got to give an account to a male boss. And that male boss tells her what to do. That's despised, vile, and that is never to be in the eyes of God. Because in the eyes of God, Ephesians 5 says that woman is to be under her husband. Princes, all right, that's under the king, also did sit and speak against me. You are going to have enemies if you're going to serve God. Get that down, write it down, seal it down, write it on every single page of your Bible. I'm going to have enemies. I'm going to have enemies. And get to know it. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Don't you dare tell anybody if they get saved and all their problems are going to be gone. But thy servant did meditate in thy statute. All right, so they speak against me. Who cares? So they throw false accusations. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to love the Lord. I'm going to try to get what is vile, worthless, and despised out of my out of my life, so I can be quickened by the Word. I can be made alive. I can have the joy, peace. I can have the long suffering. I can have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I don't need the fruits of spirits. I don't need the smoke of tobacco. I don't need any of that drugs. I don't need any doctors. I don't need anybody but God in my life. Even when they are talking about me, who cares? I know God's recording it. I know God's the judge. And it, talking about before, when that God to know the judge, to know what the judge expects from you, what the judge does expect from you, that you're not talking like they are talking. You will not have to fear standing before God in a big mouth. They will. And if they don't know they're doing it, they will give an account before the judge. Imagine standing before the judge and all the words that they spoke Matthew chapter 12, out of the mouth, everything you speak will be judged one day. Imagine one day when they're standing before their God and they're standing like, and all their words will be spoken. Well, I didn't know. Well, when you listen to the ministry here that I give you with my family, you know what? You're going to hear at least once a month, you're going to hear that passage in Matthew 12, I hope, come up and say that every idle word that you speak shall give an account. You will be held without excuse by listening to me and the word of God to say that your mouth will be spoken before God and before everyone. Keep doing what God told you to do. God will tell you how to speak about somebody and God will tell you how not to speak against anybody. Now I believe, and I could be wrong, but there's things, I believe a husband and wife can talk. You have to be careful if the children are not around or anybody else. Thy testimonies. 
God's testimonies from Genesis to Revelation. We know that Jesus Christ fulfilled the 48 prophecies of his first advent. Glory to God. Amen. Are you having delight in what Jesus Christ has not done yet? I delight in the rapture. And the rapture hasn't happened. But I know if Jesus can do 48 prophecies, if I can know that he loved Israel so much that he destroyed Egypt to get them out, I know God will do all he can to do to call me home one day, whether I die or whether I'm caught up alive. And I delight in that. I know the Bible says that God sounds like thunder. So when a thunderstorm comes, hey, hey, man, glory to God, wait for my name to be called. It says we shall meet in the clouds. All right, look up on a cloudy day. Hey, today could be the day. You take that little? Yes. Delight in the Lord. I'm delighting the Lord that one day I'm going to get up on a horse. I'm going to be riding a Calvary. He said, there's no more Calvaries. You don't think there's no more Calvaries. You wait till the King of Kings and the Lord. The Lord sits up on that front horse and goes, let's get up and go. You know what Joel says? Joel says that we're going to be an army. We're going to be in a rank. And we can go over mountains. We can go over hills. We can go over broken walls. And we're not going to break, we're not going to break rank. We're still going to be a uniform army. Impossible. You know, Joel says, says that they're going to stab me and I ain't going to die. I've already died. Or I've already been freed from victory of the grave. That's the testimonies. What is the testimonies of the Bible that is not being taught in these vacation Bible classes today? And not being taught in the Sunday school? Is not being taught in adult church services? Little boy David went up. And in the name of God, defeated a giant in his life. You know what that teaches me? That's a testimony that God can take a rock and ruin the, 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 the giants in your life just by a rock. And when you got the heat on in your life, and boy, you are just sweating. Uh, and then when the Lord comes into your life, you can just sit amongst that fire and just... And hear the world say, Come out, Meshach, in the book. In the, uh, I'm going to mess up their names. And you shout back to the king, No, I'm with the Lord. You take the world. I'll stay here. No, get out. I don't want to get out. It's worse out there than being in the fire with Jesus. You know, the fire with Jesus in the furnace, they didn't need to buy clothes at Walmart. None of their clothes singed. They didn't smell like cigarettes or anything like that. But, oh, when they got out of the furnace, they, you know, their clothes were rot and they had to buy new shoes and new sandals and those testimonies when they drove that woman into Jesus said hey she's an adulteress and Jesus sat there and quoted scripture we believe he wrote on the ground and the, and the, and the people that accused her walked away and there you are, the accused sinner, standing before Jesus. And Jesus says, go and sin no more. I've forgiven you. You ever wonder if that girl just wrapped her arms around him before she left? You ever think that maybe she was one of the women that followed him around? The testimonies of the Lord Jesus. You know how many resurrections are in the Bible? People who died and by the prophet or by Jesus himself has come to a life. You know what it tells me one day? If, 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 if I die before the I don't want to say Mr. Rapture. If I die before the rapture, I'm going up. I don't care if you put me in a concrete slab and put a boulder on top of my grave. I'm coming up. The stone was rolled away. You think a concrete lid's going to stop me from coming up? I would love to be near a cemetery when the rapture happens. The dead in Christ will rise up first. I want those graves are going to start popping open. I wonder if that's what happened in Jerusalem. It says some of the saints arose. And we're going to rise in a body to get our new body. That's the testimony of the Lord to make you alive. When, when this world puts you down, this world, life is not good. Read Psalms. 
And when you get bogged down and you, you get in trouble with the world for doing right. Well, hey, Lord, what is this? I get in trouble for doing what I'm supposed to do and I get in trouble. Lord, I get in the Word. I read the Word. I read about saints in the Bible who are no better than I am. And God has lifted up and said, yeah, if God can do it to them, he can do it to me. Oh, I get angry with my, my, my job. I get angry with the people around there. I read Moses. He got angry. Yeah, but he didn't get to go to the promised land. But he got to sit there with Elijah and the three best apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ and got to talk to Jesus Christ with Elijah. I mean, can you just imagine that conversation? Talking about Jesus, the sinless Messiah, how Moses and Elijah rolled on. Elijah turns to Moses, that was a great job you did in Egypt. Yeah, how about those three and a half years you didn't cause no rain, brother? Yeah, man. Peter comes over, hey, I won't go three times. I ruined the whole thing. God spoke and that was it. It was over with. You know, as soon as man came in, God had to speak. All right, that's it. Let's get down off the mountain now. He wants to stay here. Those are the testimonies of the Lord to make you alive in this stupid fed up, pathetic world that's going to burn up. That when people come to you, oh, you're preaching like that, you're turning people off, oh, look up, and blah, 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 cussing you out and everything like that, and you go read the Bible and you read the book of Acts and say, hey, I don't care what that Christian or that preacher said. That's the same thing that Peter, James, and John suffered. Wow. Oh, I know a street preacher that was arrested. Yeah, I know Peter was arrested for street preaching too. How about that? Those are the testimonies that you are to write in and to put in your own person. Now listen, God is not going to destroy Egypt for you. God, if you say, God, let there be three and a half years, I don't think God's going to listen to you. But you know what? God has given you a personal life of his own that no one else can do what you're going to do. If you go by God's will and God's way, by quickening by the word, that nobody else is going to be able to do. And things are going to happen in your life that won't happen to nobody else. And when you get your mind off the despised, vile, worthlessness of this world. Then you're alive in the Lord. And you got the joy, peace. And you, you're going on with the Lord. And you can sing, I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And then somebody comes up to you, they're worldly or they're Christian, they go, about you, you I got the joy. I'm happy. What about you? Where's your happiness? Now, how much does it cost? The sales tax. And how long does it last? I know one of these days that I'm going to be quickened by the word of God because it says it so. That one of these days, eternity is going to start and forever, no more pain, no more sorrow, forever joy, forever to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Forever. At least one crown I'll get. At least. Right now, today. I may not get the ability to reign in a city, but may I, I, I'll, I'll get at least part of the reign or, or at least part of this earth where somebody hasn't done nothing for Jesus Christ. All they've done is despise and vile, worthless things. I've done them too. I'm a sinner. For all sin comes sin short of glory of God, for there's none righteous, no, not one. But I know the difference. I know to put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know to repent. You can be quickened by the word. That means to be in the Word. That means to be in the right Word. King James 1611 Bible. I was reading, well, it had to have been Matthew, sure went to the Old Testament. Uh, it said Jesus, and there was a little, I, I got footnotes in my Bible here. I'll, I'll go over and read. And it caught me on Matthew. It said, the footnote letter, I looked over, it said, omit Jesus. I'm like, And that's the kind of Bible you want. It says the footnote is omit Jesus. 
That's the Bible you want? And that's in my Schofield Bible to give you a reference to those scholarly people. That is in those Bibles. And probably not as a footnote. If not, it actually takes Jesus just takes the name out. Now, you're going to have the right word to be quickened. Quickened means to be made alive. The only way you can be made alive is by the word. The word became flesh, the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the word. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. I am the shepherd. You better have the proper Jesus. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Make a joy. 